Hello everyone and welcome to the mods that I use for Kerbal Space Program. Every so often I get asked for a mod list and people are frustrated when I cannot give them a mod list. And I think part of this comes out of a misunderstanding of how I do Kerbal Space Program. The first thing is, I have many installs of Kerbal Space Program. These are just the active installs. I probably have put together a hundred installs of Kerbal Space Program. And uh, maybe people don't know this about Kerbal Space Program, but you can actually copy the stuff and put them into a new folder and have many different sets of mods in different folders with Kerbal Space Program. All you have to do is go into the folder and run the ksp underscore x64.exe file, the executable file, and it will run because Kerbal Space Program doesn't put anything into your system registry unlike most games. So copying into new folders is not a problem. Uh, this may not be true of uh, Kerbal Space Program 2, I don't know, I hope it is. But as a result, I've created many different parallel installs of Kerbal Space Program for different purposes with different sets of mods. For instance, just an airplane install, or this is the install that I use for solar system tourism, or my mission profiles and rocket profiles. I've got an interstellar install I haven't actually made videos in yet. This is the install for the pass-through system, because that has a lot of parts that I've made that are peculiar. Uh, the Principia install, because this says Principia. And now the ones that you can easily access the mod list to is the RP2000 install for my RP2000 series. If you watch the installing RP2000, I actually do that in CCAN. So that's the easiest one. That is the smallest install I have of Realism Overhaul, except for this install, which is the baseline, which only has the requirements. That you can find with just the installing Realism Overhaul video. So this one is associated with the real, uh, installing Realism Overhaul video and you can watch that video and get all that. Or uh, this is the RP2000 video. So um, RP2000 video, uh, all my RP2000 videos also have the mod list in the video description. So that one is easy. Uh, the reason why I don't necessarily distribute the mod list for the other ones is because they will almost certainly crash your game. Uh, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. And generally, I make the installs so that they use all of it. And even then, they will crash fairly regularly. So like Solar System Tourism, the people who view my uh, Twitch live streams know, it'll crash about every three hours. Uh, that's just how it is. If I install more mods, it'll crash sooner. If I take out mods, it'll crash later. But it'll just crash. And uh, it's right at the bleeding edge of things. And if you actually tried to install all the mods in here, you, it would crash even sooner for you because I've trimmed out parts, okay? Like FASA. I have taken out the Mercury parts from FASA, also those ICBM parts, and uh, also the Mercury cabin. So in each of these, I've trimmed out things. Kerbal Rocketry has practically none of it left. I just have a, a few RCS ports, uh, some solid motors, and that's it, none of the engines. I've got the batteries, but most of the parts for KW Rocketry I've trimmed out. Uh, so if you were try to try and put this together, you would need a computer with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, like the US Rockets pack from Raider Nick, I only have the Titan IV parts. Uh, and I, yeah, I do have all the Titan IV parts, but uh, yeah, it's so yeah. <laughs> um, so it gives a wrong impression of things. And so the first thing you need to ask yourself when you're making an install of Kerbal Space Program and you want a whole lot of mods is, what exactly are you doing with your install of Kerbal Space Program? This is what I, I, I'm puzzled by with people asking me for a mod list because they think I only have one install. And so the first thing I have is uh, each install is customized. This one is just for running the shuttle. So it has ISS parts because the shuttle interacted with ISS. It has Soyuz parts because, of course, while the shuttle was docked to the ISS, we have the Soyuz there. What it doesn't have is things that the shuttle did not interact with. Uh, so uh, none of the futuristic parts uh, and stuff like that. So um, uh, everything is select, if you will, and carefully managed. Uh, so the EDB... Uh, we don't have all sorts of rockets in here. Another complication is that I also make my own parts, right? This EDB mods folder, these are just my parts uh, in this solar system tourism series. And if we take a look, uh, that's 1.15 gigabytes of just my parts. Uh, 
and not all of them are released. Uh, that's another caveat. Uh, some of them are, some of them aren't. I sometimes don't remember which ones I've released. Uh, oops. <laughs> so anyway, so let's talk about uh, just a historical install. Let this, so this is the history install. Again, if you were to try and put this together, it would be bad. But uh, uh, you can manage it with 32 gigabytes of RAM, perhaps. AIES Aerospace is a very old legacy mod that I use for antennae, and that's it. Uh, it has nice antennae. Uh, some of these are requirements of realism overhaul, like advanced jet engines. I'm not going to talk about them too much, so realism overhaul requirement. Uh, this is part of the updated uh, Energia mod, so that's uh, there's a package of different things for Energia. This is the Angara rocket by DeQ. Uh, so a lot of these are just uh, rockets or spacecraft because this is a history install and I want to have all the rockets and spacecraft. This is the HTV mod. This is, uh, I mean, I think it's on Space Dock. Or uh, uh, Curse Forge? It might be in Curse Forge. Uh, this is Japanese uh, launch vehicles. That's another mod. Uh, ASET is customarily uh, required for other things. It's got props and all, so that's ASET props. HK Propulsion Pack has a lot of SRBs, uh, casters, gem, you can see there. Atmospheric All Pilot is just a utility if you want it. B9 Procedural Wings is a must, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, actually, uh, yeah, let's emphasize the ones that you should absolutely have. All of these are fungible except for advanced jet engines because it's a realism overhaul requirement and uh, B9 procedural wings. B9 animation modules is required for certain other mods. B9 part switch will be, uh, again, if you look at other mods, they'll tell you that they require it. Uh, Baja, that's uh, another animation thing, BD animation modules. This one, particular one is the one required by Raider Nix mods and he's modified it, so it's a particular one. Blackheart is just textures for procedural parts. And so there are a lot of procedural parts, alternate legacy textures available. Uh, Bobcat is an old mod that might not exist anymore. And uh, for some reason, it was required by the uh, ISS stuff. Boeing Cruise Services, I think, was CST100 Starliner uh, by Dylan Simro. Uh, I haven't got it to work with uh, Realism Overhaul properly yet. Canadarm is a Canadarm. That, that, that's the, one of the Canadarm mods. The other can, Canadarm mod uh, is RKE Canadarm, like this. Okay, uh, so again, the, none of those are like what I would consider essential, uh, but optional things that you could have. Cities is just my thing. Uh, that is, in fact, uh, a ploppable cities for Kerbal Constructs. Uh, I don't remember if I ever released that. A community resource back is required for Realism Overhaul. Custom pre-launch checks is required for something. Uh, so that came uh, as a requirement for something else. CX Aerospace for station parts, especially ISS parts, alternate to the normal ones that I've used. Uh, decoupler Shroud is required for certain things. Uh, that, again, I wouldn't install that separately. Uh, DECU Energy is for the Energia rocket, and uh, there is a new pack for that. Uh, distant Object Enhancement, I suggest you just put that in. Uh, that's a good thing to have in for visual purposes. Uh, EV Mods is my folder. That is all my parts. Uh, in this case, we have the rockets and uh, what you call it, the probes and such that I think will be necessary for history. Uh, so Max or Neutron rocket or you know rocket profile rockets, that sort of thing. Uh, so I've selected those out, but none of the you know there's no well, there is the pass through station, but it probably doesn't have all of it. Yeah, it doesn't have all of it here. Uh, so yep, yeah, select parts from my own inventory. Environmental visual enhancements is a must because that is a requirement for RSS visual enhancements and without that you will not have clouds in Realism Overhaul. And some of this, again, uh, the essential ones are covered in the Installing Realism Overhauls uh, video or the Installing RP2000 video already. I'm just going through, just in case you're wondering. Uh, FASA is for Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo parts. And uh, sometimes I'll trim them out, but in this case, because it's the history install, I have all of them. You could use Blue Dog Design Bureau, but it's much larger than this and it has fictional parts. So one reason I don't have Blue Dog in here is because that is has a lot of fictional, or not fictional, but, you know, uh, eyes uh, turn skyward parts or stuff like that, hypothetical parts. 
uh, that wouldn't fit with the, well, they would take up a lot of space compared to the 219 megabytes that I have here for FASA. So uh, that's why I prefer FASA. Uh, frame aerospace research is required by realism overhaul and must be used. Fire spitter, the plugin. Fire spitter plugin is required for a lot of things. You should just put it in right away. Uh, forgotten real engines is optional. It has some nice engines in it. And uh, they're, they're particular engines that you won't get necessarily everywhere else. These are old Firefly engines. These are for the Japanese launch vehicles that might look a little bit better than the ones that come with the Japanese launch vehicle mod. RD 843, I think is for the Vega rocket. Uh, Rutherford engine, of course, for the Electron rocket. Uh, There's the Vega other parts, the solid boosters. And uh, the Viking engines uh, were used by European Space Agency, also applicable to the Indian Space Agency with the Vicus engine. Uh, so forgotten real engines there. Freedom Text is another pack of uh, textures for procedural parts. Uh, FS Hangar Extender I consider necessary for realism overhaul. It lets you pop out of the VAB so that you can build extra big rockets and not be limited by the VAB space. Uh, Hull Cam BDS is so that you can put little cameras on your rockets so that you can get different views. Uh, if you want to be fancy, I recommend that. ISS community is the old ISS mod with the old ISS parts. So if you saw my constructing ISS videos, uh, that's what the, uh, that's mainly where those come from. Uh, James Webb Space Telescope is the James Webb Space Telescope. <laughs> uh, there is a mod like that. Uh, I have a patch for it that is necessary so it looks right uh, somewhere. Uh, I might not actually have that in here, so I should probably sneak it in, but uh, otherwise this texture just get mess messed up. GSI is raster prop monitor for the internal um, multi-function displays in capsules so or spacecraft. So uh, I don't know if it works for the latest version of KSB. Uh, we'd have to check. Kerbal attachment system is for connecting ve vehicles together with pipes, basically. And it has other functions as winches and stuff like that. It's a very peculiar sort of thing. I haven't actually used its functions in a very long time, but it's such a lightweight mod that I usually put it in. Uh, so I usually keep that in there. Cat and Escape Canaveral is pretty big, 200 megabytes, and it's just a KC area. So if you uh, see my videos and you see really fancy Cape Canaveral, that's because of Cat and Escape Canaveral. Uh, it requires the highest level of textures for RSS. Uh, so, and without the appropriate RSS textures, you're not going to get Cat and Escape and Canaveral to work. And you notice this highest level of RSS textures is 3.16 gigabytes. And that's all going into your RAM. So if you're not prepared for that, you're not going to be able to use it. You need a lot of RAM to be able to run that. Uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement is required by Realism Overhaul. Absolutely necessary. Kerbal Constructs, I recommend just having it. It's handy. You can plop runways in various places, you might want it. And it's fairly lightweight. Uh, Kerbalo is just for the big low module on the ISS and that's it. Uh, it also needs a texture fix. Uh, Kerbal reusability expansion is for the landing legs, grid fins and stuff like that for Falcon or for uh, New Glenn, etc. I forget if I generally use it. I'm. It's pretty big. It's got a lot of these things and I forget if I use all of this. I probably don't. But I think I use the grid fins titanium primarily. Uh, so I could probably trim that out and just keep that, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Kerbal inventory system, I'd consider required if you want to do anything interesting with Kerbal's carrying stuff. Unless you're in 1.12, where the stock a game has an inventory system. In that case, you don't have to worry about it. But this 1.8.1, it didn't have an inventory system. Um, KK Antares, that is the Antares rocket by Kartoffel Kuchin. And so I, I've, I think that's part of a pack by Raider Nick with the Cygnus nowadays. But uh, yeah, so that would be how you get it. Uh, Copernicus, that is required for real, well, required for real solar system. Without that, real, real solar system will not work. And uh, KOS is KOS. It is a programming language. It is what I use to automate the rockets for the rocket profiles, for instance, and mission profiles. So uh, yeah, that allows you to run a script that controls the rocket. KS3P is the post-processing mod. It is um, the Kerbal post-processing mod. 
uh, it makes things look better. Uh, that's it. And uh, I may have tweaked the the configurations a little bit. Those are custom. Don't ask me to share them. Yeah, those are proprietary. <laughs> that's my look, darn it. Okay. Uh, KSP switch, uh, KSC switcher is required to switch launch locations. It's generally a requirement for realism overhaul. You must have it, really. Uh, KSP wheel, it, I suggest you find it and get it. That is to fix some of the wheels. If you have wheel problems with something, uh, that might help. Um, KW Rocketry is a very, very old mod, and I use a few parts from it. I wouldn't necessarily, unless you're really stuck loving these parts, I wouldn't necessarily put it in. Uh, I just happen to like some of the parts, especially the Separatrons. Well, uh, KK Launchers Pack, this has the SpaceX parts, and uh, it had the Atlas V, but I have my own Atlas V, so I deleted those. And the, it also has the Delta rocket part. So uh, that's separate though, but it'll go in the same folder. So I think uh, KK had the Delta rocket parts. Line at Aerospace, I don't know, uh, they're they're all named incorrectly, but like I think this one is actually the Hubble Space Telescope, and so some of these are actual real probes, but they're named different, so it's a little bit complicated. Uh, I think one of them might have been a lunar probe, lunar probe, or something like that, or uh, yeah, there's uh, they're based on historical parts, so they might be useful for this install. Uh, Magic Smoke Industries is Infernal Robotics, so it's the robotics parts. It is necessary for the Canada Arms, if I could get them to work. I like, like, a lot of these things don't even work right now. I mean, uh, just because I have them doesn't mean they all work right. Uh, Main Sailor is more textures for procedural parts. Mech Jeb is Mech Jeb. Uh, if you don't know what it is, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, modular Flight Integrator is required, uh, required for... I forget if it was FAR or Advanced Jet Engines, but it's got to come with something and it's a realism overhaul requirement. It'll come with something, I'm pretty sure. Modular Launch Pads is um, a mod that allows you to uh, make good looking launch pads <laughs> uh, and uh, resize them and all that business. So, um, yeah, there's Saturn Launch Pads, Soyuz Launch Pads. It's a fairly big mod, though. Um, this one, this version is a legacy version. If you get the new version, it's much larger. Uh, this legacy version is smaller, and I think I probably trimmed something out. Niche parts, uh, as it says, uh, very peculiar little engines. There's more Rutherfords here. I like these S5.92 and S5.92. That's the Briz engine and the Frigate engine. I use those a lot. Uh, Super Dracos, but they're, they're generally smallish engines, a variety of them. Some of them barely more than RCS thrusters, and we also have RCS thruster blocks. So, yeah, this this pack is super helpful for the smaller engines for probes and such. If you're, if you are doing probe things, you should have that. OSS NTR is a requirement of Katniss Cape Canaveral. So it has a bunch of buildings and stuff that Katniss Cape Canaveral. Well, apparently not in there. Like crawlerway, um, some tiles and roads and stuff like that. Uh, it will work with Kerbal Constructs so that you can place those parts in various places. So you could probably create a whole bunch of scenery with that. And uh, kind of skipping that role already does. Persistent Rotation, I consider a requirement for Realism Overhaul. It'll keep your thing rotating while in Time Warp. Planet Shine is a visual mod. It creates a planetary reflection on your vehicles. That's good and you should just have it. Uh, it also allows you to adjust the ambient light a little bit better than the stock system of ambient light adjustment. Uh, procedural fairings, requirement, just have it. Procedural parts, requirement, just have it. Uh, uh, real shoots, it is a requirement for realism overhaul. Real engine pack is my preferred engine pack. Uh, a lot of people use RO engines. I don't like that because it's a hodgepodge of different mods. I like to have the actual mod, not somebody's collection of other mods. So. Um, this has particular uh, a whole array of engines, uh, including Raptor engines. Though I have my own models of those now, and uh, this, uh, the models are generally very high quality. So I like this pack a lot for the models. And also, as if you're not using the niche parts, the S5.92 and S5.98 is here as well. And those again very helpful for probes and smaller missions. 
And yeah, so that's my, my preferred engine pack, if not for my own parts. Real fuels is required for realism overhaul, real heat is required for realism overhaul, realism overhaul is required for realism overhaul. Um, real plume is required for realism overhaul. Real skill boosters, I only have particular things in here. I think I trimmed most of it out because it would be duplicates of other stuff. Uh, so Athena rocket, Ariane parts, some engines, and uh, especially the PSLV parts. So this is my source for the PSLV. And uh, yeah, so that's real scale boosters. But most of real scale boosters is not in here. It's only like 35 megabytes of it. Real solar system, obviously a requirement for me when I'm doing the uh, realism stuff. RK can arm is an R can arm, as I mentioned. These are all the Raider Nick mods. And so Raider Nick has a whole ton of these things. Uh, Cygnus, uh, this one, it might not be available anymore. It's a DeQ, oh no, I think DeQ Saturn V is available right now. So that's an alternative version of the Saturn V compared to the FASA one that Radio Nick thought was uh, a little bit better. Uh, this one is just, uh, has some tweaks that he made to make it a little bit more compatible. That was just for my purposes. But there, is, you can just get the DeQ Saturn V uh, mod and uh, Raider Nick had just tweaked those. I have no idea. Raider Nick had this thing uh, that he recommended, but that's from some other mod. The, these will not be, that one will not be easy to find, I don't think. Um, Raider Nick's miscellaneous things has the a B330 inflatable module from Bigelow, uh, and some other parts that you might be interested in. Uh, the Salyut, Raider Nick Salyut, is exactly what you that what it is, is the Soviet space station, uh, Skylab, the American space station, a bunch of solar panels, uh, uh, Serenix Soviet probes pack has a ton of Soviet probes, in fact, probably the best source of Soviet probes, but Nick's and Luna's and Molnia's and the whole business, and Soviet rockets, of course, uh, has all sorts of Soviet rockets, Cosmos, N1, Cyclone, uh, Zenit, R7, you know, the works. And uh, so use the, that's a spacecraft. And I think the actual name for the mod is Soviet spacecraft. Um, US probes actually has quite a lot of US probes. Uh, I think a lot of essentials. In fact, the best versions of Voyager or Pioneer available. And uh, the US rockets pack by default has Juno, Scout, Thor, Titan IV, and Vanguard. RSS date time uh, changes the dates and times. I, I forget in which locations, but anyway, that is a realism overhaul requirement, I think. RSS texture is required for real solar system. RSS visual enhancements, I recommend. If you can find the right version, all of these, you have to find a particular version. This is a 1.8.1 install. You can see in the title there. Uh, in the folder name, I indicate which version it is. This is 1.8.1, .1, so. Uh, I don't know if these things all work with uh, more recent versions. Scatter is required for RSS visual enhancements. It is a visual mod. Uh, this is for the launch pads for SpaceX, the SpaceX launch pads and stuff like that. Uh, I forget who made it, but I guess Science 818. But uh, various launch pads. It's a pretty heavy mod though, so unless you're pretty dedicated to doing the SpaceX stuff, uh, I wouldn't necessarily put it in, but 131 megabytes just for those pads. Uh, ship manifest, I generally always put in. It allows you to transfer stuff a little bit easier. And simple adjustable fairings uh, was required for the Starliner mod, the Boring Crew Services, but I haven't gotten it to work for anything. So, smoke screen is required for real plumes. Solver engines is required for advanced jet engines, I believe. Uh, so it's a regular requirement for realism overhaul, but you don't have to get it separately. Uh, Soviet engines, uh, it's in legacy pack, Bobcat Soviet engine pack that I still have. And uh, this Soviet pack is a requirement for the ISS, the old ISS community, community ISS mod. And I have no idea if it's still around anymore. Uh, so you spacecraft, same way, requirement for the old ISS mod. I forget, maybe this is Made is the deck you? I don't know who made this. Sorry. Uh, I just carry it from install to install. Uh, space shuttle system, this is the Dylan Semro version of the space shuttle system, slightly modified by me. 
Uh, space Launch System is a Sobol's Space Launch System. That's just what it's called. That's for the SLS. Uh, SP Rockets uh, from the Super Penguin. I just have the Electron from that. Uh, and, um, squat folder. Uh, SSTU Labs. I have trimmed stuff out from because it's a big mod. Uh, I forget why I need it, but uh, I've reduced the size of it tremendously. Uh, I think I needed the docking ports because I have legacy craft files. Only 66 megabytes of it. So I wouldn't put all of SSTU Labs in. Uh, it's just a few parts that I needed to make sure that legacy files worked. Um, it lacks stock extensions. And this is just for very particular parts again. Uh, in rocketry, I have the extendable RCS and OMS and Vernier. Um, there's certain engines. I don't know exactly what I use those for, to be honest. Uh, I just sort of carry these along just in case. Otherwise, craft files won't open. Uh, TD props are props. Um, they're stuff that the Kerbals can carry. Uh, KIS inventory kind of things. Uh, uh, texture replacer replaces the sky map, and so there's an old sky map. Um, was it Irish Joe who made these? Uh, somebody made the sky map and shared it. Uh, or Teflon Mike. I think it might be. It's either Teflon Mike or Average Joe who made those. And then I've just carried a uh, texture replacer along just for the sky map, basically. Um, tag life support for life support. And Kerbal Alarm Clock. That is Kerbal Alarm Clock. Uh, and Transfer Window Planner, actually. Transfer Window Planner as well. Helpful for planning transfers. Uh, tweak Scale, as it says. And this is the Real Launch Sites mod. And so that works with uh, Kerbal Constructs to place various things. Uh, you would have to place them manually. They're just Kerbal Constructs thingamajigs. I might have fixed them. Because the original date for them, you can see, is 2016, and I think Kerbal Constructs had changed. So I had to change a few. You can see some of these dated 2020. Yeah, I had to fix those. That is probably because I changed those to make sure they worked. So that is what the history install is like. But the other installs are different, right? Uh, so we've taken a long time with that, but... Uh, to sort of indicate some of the differences, a lot of the rockets and probes, for instance, you, you remember the Raider Nick uh, stuff, but here in the US probes folder, I only have one folder here instead of all that stuff with Pioneer and Voyager. We don't use those for the this install, so I got rid of them. Soviet rockets, I don't have the Dnieper, uh, Cyclone, Zenit. Uh, the, most of the rockets from the RN Soviet rockets pack are not in here. We only have the two big ones, the N1 and the Proton, because for solar system tourism, those are the only ones that make sense because we're doing uh, long range missions with crew. So we need rockets that can carry crew. I do have the station parts because, well, crew, because we're doing crude things. But for US rockets, Scout doesn't matter, a Vanguard doesn't matter, you know. And so I just went with Titan IV because it's the only one that can carry crew, right? So I've trimmed out all those. So if I told you what mods I use for this install, uh, you would have way too many parts. And uh, my own parts, instead of having everything with rockets in, uh, some rockets are useful for carrying crew, potentially. But mostly, and we have Starship here, and uh, but we also have Monument, which is not going into historical install. And a lot of my peculiar designs, like Shinkansen, which aren't going to go into a historical install because they are not historical, uh, right? So there are a lot of things in here that are my own peculiar things that aren't relevant to the previous install that we went through. Uh, some things uh, like interstellar fuel switch that is required for KSB interstellar. Again, not an historical thing. This is KSB interstellar, the warp plugin, and 566 megabytes. So you're gonna have to really want that. Uh, but also, USI Technologies, we have Akita Caribou, uh, USI Construction, MKS. Again, these are all uh, base building, futurist. Uh, so the KSP Interstellar is for futuristic engines. Uh, USI is for base building and building large stations and having that kind of infrastructure. So those are helpful for this sort of futuristic thing where we have space uh, solar system tourism. But again, not relevant to the historical install. 
Simple logistics is helpful for transferring. Instead of having Kerbal attachment system, building pipes between all the parts of the base or actually physically connecting all the parts of the base, simple logistics means that we can transfer resources as long as they're in render range of each other. So we don't have to physically attach them. So that's helpful. And... Lonesome Robots is a nice mod with uh, the MADV, the Mars Ascent Descent Vehicle, and Mars Base Camp. Those parts I've used in the course of the Solar System Tourism thing. And Chrono Vessel view Viewer is just a mod that uh, in the VAB lets you take like blueprint photos of your various vessels if you want to use those. Other than that, there's a fair amount of overlap. Yeah, of course, the realism overhaul mods are here, and the other ones that I highly recommended are here. Uh, but yeah, it's just a matter of trimming some out and putting other stuff in. And generally, uh, everything scratches the limits. So that's a 16.4 gigabyte folder. This one scratching the limits of my thing at uh, 13 gigabytes only, but. Uh, it all depends on what's in there. This one I haven't actually run yet. There's the pass-through system, which is uh, that one. Uh, some of these are older ones that I've used a lot, like the EDB and history one. This pass-through one is still being built. The Principia one is still a work in progress. Uh, RP2000 is just so that I could make RP2000, uh, uh, so that I could uh, configure the various parts for RP2000. So as parts that I uh, need to price and place into the tech tree. This clean one is the one I use for the RP2000 series and it has very few things and it's in accordance with the list of the things that I have in the RP2000 series. And so it's the sparest install. Uh, fewest number of folders uh, for a realism overhaul install that I actually use, 60. So that is that. And there's a specifically shuttle install that we're using for a new series on Twitch that, again, focuses on shuttle things. And But a lot of overlap. So if you paid attention to all the mods I mentioned in the history one, those are basically the mods that I use, except for the, the, the few additional ones that I mentioned in the solar system tourism context. Uh, planes are completely different. If you want to do a plane install, that, that involves a lot of interesting mods that have nothing to do like Mark IV system, Mark II expansion, Mark III airliner, and all these weird Navy fish. We've got the BD Armory thing, Aviator Arsenal, AOA Tech. Uh, the airplane thing is a whole other business. Uh, if you want to do airplanes with Realism Overhaul and Kerbal Space Program, you can get a whole lot of mods just for that. So that's a whole separate thing. But... Yeah, if you if you tell me what you want out of your install, I can tell you what mods to get, but generally putting any of these together is somewhat of a dangerous thing <laughs> if you want to actually run your game for any length of time. So uh, I, I don't know if there's been a satisfactory video, but it's my attempt to explain the situation whenever I get asked what my mod list is, and you can see the conundrum I'm in, because you would only want that mod list if you were doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing. Uh, if you want to have a history installer, if you want to do space uh, solar system tourism, I wouldn't recommend necessarily putting that exact set of mods in for something else. So if you tell me what you want to do, I can recommend some mods, but otherwise um, I've got to shy away from mod lists except for the regular installing RP2000 or installing Realism Overhaul videos, which already covered the basics. So anyway, I don't know if that's as satisfactory or not, but with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.